Well, hello, Scouts. And what better time than to make monkey bread? Now, I want to assure you, no monkeys were harmed in the making of this bread. And you're also going to find that it's equally both amazing to eat and easy to make. So what we're going to do is today we're going to be cooking using charcoal, uh, a, a little scaffolding stand here for our leave no trace to get it elevated off the ground. Got my 12 inch regular Dutch oven. And today we're also going to use a Dutch oven liner. These are foil. They're easy for cleanup. And they also, uh, in certain dishes, will help you because when I'm going to dump out this monkey bread, I'm going to be perfectly sure that it's going to pop out of here without a problem. Um, not that it won't in, in this uh, Dutch oven, which has gotten a lot of use as well seasoned, but this is a great tool when you're looking for an easy cleanup in the morning. So let me start first by how we install one of these liners in a Dutch oven. This Dutch oven is cool, so I don't have to worry about touching it. I'm going to take my lid, put it down here on the ground on my lid stand. So if I were to just put it in here like this, the edges would get caught on my bale of my Dutch oven. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to simply take and tear about the width of where the bale connects to the Dutch oven, and I'm going to fold it under. I'm going to line up that on one side and come over here on the other side and figure out and line up exactly where the other part is there where the bale connects to the Dutch oven and I'm gonna fold that under as well. I'm gonna stick this in my Dutch oven which is cool so I can touch it and then I'm gonna take my cool Dutch oven lid and I'm gonna put it on the top. Now if I just kept it like this, this lid here, this rim that goes around the perimeter of the lid is going to act as a trough which is going to collect ash which potentially is going to find its way into my monkey bread. So with that lid in place to act as like a clamp, I'm going to take and I'm going to fold over the edge of this Dutch oven liner onto the side of my Dutch oven. Now in this, I'll move the bale out of the way so I can go do the other side. Once I have all the foil bent over on the side of my Dutch oven pot, I'm just going to take my lid, give it a couple spins while pushing it down to make sure it's firmly seated and it's not rocking at all on the pot. And that's going to ensure that my heat stays in the Dutch oven and doesn't find its way out while I'm baking. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some heat under my Dutch oven so that I could start the process of making our monkey bread. So I've got my heat on my Dutch oven and on the bottom of the Dutch oven I did one ring of coals the same diameter as the bottom of the Dutch oven which as you know is slightly smaller than the top. In the top, I put a complete ring around the outer edge of the Dutch oven lid to create the heat for the top, which is slightly more coals than the bottom. And that's going to give me a nice ratio of heat to not burn the bottom, but make sure that the top is baked. What I'm going to start by doing is I need bottom heat because I'm going to start by melting a stick and a half of butter in the bottom of this Dutch oven. So why don't we get started with that? I'm going to move my bale out of the way. I'm going to grab my lid lifter from my Dutch oven, which clamps down. I'm going to lift my lid off. I'm going to put it down here on my lid stand. And I've got my lid liner ready to go. We're going to add some butter. No need to put any spray oil or anything on this because the butter is going to give you plenty of lubrication for the bottom of this to prevent anything from sticking. So let's get going with the butter. Okay, we're going to give that butter a chance to melt down. 
So Scott, our butter is melting up beautifully. Uh, I took a spoon, broke it up a little bit to help speed it along. And what we're gonna do is, I'm gonna take a peek in there. Yeah, it's basically done uh, melting down. So I am going to, while that finishes melting down, I am going to add uh, a cup of, a packed cup of brown sugar. Notice I have all my ingredients already measured out and labeled what they're for and what is in the container. So I'm gonna to add to this my brown sugar. And then I'm gonna to add to this a half a cup of chopped walnuts. It's important to have them chopped. Now, you may have somebody in your group uh, that can't have nuts. So you have to keep that in mind. This may be an alternate that you don't use. One of the other things you could add about this time is you could add some chopped apple. You could peel it. You could put the skin on it. Just obviously core it and chop that up finely and put it in there. I'm using my Ziploc bag that I used uh, for the butter as a place to put my spoon so I don't get everything dirty over here. So now what I'm going to do is I've got to cut up some Pillsbury Grands and Going to use some food service gloves here and put these on uh, because I've been handling a lot of different things here and I want to make sure that what I'm making is safe. So I'm going to get my gloves on. Got my Pillsbury Grands here that I'm going to use. Everybody loves popping these babies open. Open them, give a little push on the corner there, and get these to come out. So each one of these I'm going to cut into quarters. Now my second container of grands. What I'm gonna do here is just quickly move this off the heat because I'm sure that my butter and my brown sugar are all nicely incorporated. So I'm gonna move that out of the way so that butter does not and the brown sugar does not burn. I'm gonna cut up this roll of the grands. Now that my grands are all cut, I'm going to take, I've got a Ziploc bag here with cinnamon, teaspoon of cinnamon, and a half a cup of sugar. I'm just gonna make sure that they're mixed. And then what I'm going to do is I'm gonna put each piece of the grains that have been quartered up, make sure that they're broken up. And I'm gonna add, I could do equal to at least a couple muffins at a time. And I'm going to put them in here, Ziploc my bag, and give it a little shake and nicely cover all those grains. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to bring my Dutch oven back up and I'm going to start putting these in the Dutch oven. So I have all my quartered up grains that have been coated in cinnamon sugar in my Dutch oven. I just tried to get an even thickness, get them spread around nicely. Now we're gonna pop the lid on this, let them bake, let that bottom cook a little bit, go a little heavier uh, maintaining our top heat than maybe our bottom heat so we don't burn the bottom. And uh, let's get going and let's get this thing baking. Well, we're back, Scouts, and it's only been about 30 minutes. I've been spinning this Dutch oven lid every 10 or so minutes, maybe even a little early, or more often early on in the cooking process, especially with all that butter in the bottom. I want to make sure it eats evenly spread out, 
my Dutch oven is a little out of level, I want to be able to keep moving that around and keep that butter moving as it starts to caramelize with the sugars and all. Um, I've checked this out just before we came back on camera. It is awesome. And now what we're going to do is we are going to get this out to display it to you, kind of like what we would do if we were doing a uh, pineapple upside down cake. I'm going to start with my Mar lid lifter, give a little toss there. I'm going to get my Dutch oven lid. I've got my gloves on. I've got my lid lifter up or lid stand upside down so the bale of my Dutch oven lid fits or the loop of my Dutch oven lid fits uh, without rocking. I'm now going to take and put some foil over this and that's to just help a little bit with cleanup. Actually, I'm going to go like this. It'll get back together again in a second here. I'm going to put my lid back on my Dutch oven. Just so that's a little out of the way here. Now comes the time for a drum roll. With my gloves. Take, I'm going to flip this over. I'm going to put it back on my lid stand. And let's see what this looks like. Look at that. So that's a delicious molten. I do have a little bit of burnt here. You're going to have that a little bit. If you're not careful with that bottom heat, I thought I backed off it a little bit. Uh, but I had a little bit of burnt. You can work around it. It's monkey bread. Uh, so I hope you like this video. This is a great breakfast uh, to be able to make up. You could even make this as a dessert. Serve it, pull it apart. Uh, remember, you could put apples in it. And look at how clean that Dutch oven liner came out. It's going to make clean up a breeze. So think about different things you could do with your Dutch oven, whether it's for dessert or breakfast, and consider making a little monkey bread. For now, it's Mr. Kugler. And get out there and cook and enjoy your Dutch ovens and enjoy uh, cooking in the outdoors.